Everybody wants to know what I would do if I didn't win. I guess we'll never know. Imagine making a difference. No, imagine being the difference. The difference between I can't and I can or I won't and I will. The reason someone chooses to wake up and strive for greatness. In life, it can feel like everything is working against you. Let's defy all odds and break generational curses. This is Overstepping Poverty with Daquan and Zacchaeus. Welcome back to Overstepping Poverty, the podcast that provides you with tips, tricks, and hacks in overstepping poverty. I'm Daquan Brooks, and I'm here with my co-host, Zakia Shaw. How you doing, Zacchaeus? I'm doing wonderful, bro. I'm just, I'm so happy, bro, we made it to our 10th episode. 10? You Let's know, go. You shared with me a fact today that most people, when they're starting a podcast, they, they stop after their eighth episode. So this one for us is kind of a milestone. As we grow, super excited to see where things go. There's a lot of big changes, some other things that we're going to be doing with the podcast. So stay tuned to the end of the episode to hear what those things are. But what are we getting into today, man? Absolutely. There's been so much that's been going on in like my head and just situations that I've been in that kind of has brought us to the topic that I want to discuss today. And that's fairness. The reason for that is, is because we aren't promised anything in this world. We aren't entitled to anything in this world. The only thing that we're given is, is an opportunity to grow, to do what it is that you feel that you're here on this world for. I mean, some people receive handouts, but most handouts aren't just given. You have to work for them. Most favors aren't actual favors because there is a debt that needs to be repaid in return for that as well. So it's, it's fairness and how life is unfair. That's what I want to discuss. That's what I want to really break down today for our okay. viewers, just because, like I said, life is not fair. So I want to ask you then why? Why? What led you to want to talk about this topic? Just because there's been some things that I've been going through emotionally. There's been some life events that I've gone through this past month, two months. And, and there's times where I sit and I'm just like, I'm thinking to myself, I'm like, man, this is so unfair. Like, this doesn't make any sense. Like I've worked hard for, for where I'm at. I've gone through so many loops, so many obstacles to get to where I'm at. And for the situation that I, that I've gone through to happen, I'm like, this is unfair. But then on another side, I'm thinking to myself and I'm like, why are you having a pity party? Yeah. Like you're breathing, you're walking. This is a land of opportunity. There's so much more than just the moment that you just had, the moment of distress, the moment of disparity, yeah. you know, there's so much more. And, and so like, when I look at things on that side of you, I'm just like, wow. I was like, I'm 29. I got a lot of life left to live. But if you really look at it, you don't have much time. There's well, not you a lot never of time. Know. Exactly. So you never know. that's why I want to talk about it. And I really want to just have some of our viewers relate to the point of view that it's, it's not fair. It never yeah. is. It never was supposed to be. But there's there's things in this world that you have to take. There's things in this world that good good things happen to bad people and bad things happen to good people and you move on. 100%. That's what it is. When you brought up the topic to me as unfair, like we don't really talk about it very much prior to us getting on here. So the first thing I thought of when you mentioned fair and wanting to talk about it, and we've all been there. We've mm -hmm. all been in that place where it feels like life isn't going the way that we want and we feel sorry for ourselves. I've been there. You've been there. Everybody has been in that place. And that's exactly what I thought of when you said fair. And it's just understanding that life is not fair. Things happen in our lives that don't always go as planned. They don't always happen the way that we want them to yet. We wouldn't change a lot of the things that we've been through to get to where we are now. And I think that should help ease people's mind and just understanding that this too shall pass. All the things that we're worried about today or the things going on in our lives, it's easy to take them on and feel like the world's crashing down on you and, and things aren't fair and they're not going your way. But again, when you take a step back and you look at all the things that you do have in your life and all the blessings that you do have and how life could be and all of those things, when you take those things into perspective, we realize that life doesn't have to be fair, but we're still blessed. 
right? right? And we, we're we blessed for what we do have. And it takes a strong person to kind of get out of that pity. And it takes strong people around you to help you and be able to communicate those things. So I'm excited to hop into this. Fairness, as I just said, it's not a thing. Mm-hmm. There's nowhere where you're going to f- find fairness, but also understand that life is about an equal give or take. And that's kind of how you have to let things happen is just understand that if somebody's doing you wrong or you feel like you've been wronged in a situation, chalk that up. Don't take it as a loss, but take it as a lesson and try to move forward. Right. right. When it comes to like fairness and all this stuff that we're talking about, how would you say people can begin to accept the fact that life isn't fair? Because it's easy to compare yourself to other people when it's easy to feel like nothing goes your way ever. But like, what would you say? How would you or how have you been able to kind of pick yourself up and change your mindset more and being grateful? To put it bluntly, there's strong people in this world and there's weak people in this world. Okay. The strong people are going to understand The strong people are going to really realize like whatever situation that just happened to me, it's time for me to move past it. Whatever situation that I'm in that I feel is unfair or someone else was given a better opportunity than I was, or someone else was, was given a job promotion or someone else made the the team cut and I didn't, but I put up all this work and hours in Mm -hmm. the strong are going to move past it. And they're going to think, okay, what's the next step for me to continue to move forward? The weaker they're going to sit, they're going to feel sorry for themselves. And the there's going to be other opportunities that are going to come and those are going to be passed up on, you know, for them because they're still sitting and they're contemplating, wow, I, the world should feel bad for me, Mm -hmm. but the world does not care. They don't, there's not, there's, there's not someone out there that really cares about the stuff that you're going through, you know, the situations that you're in, they don't care. So for those people though, that are the ones that aren't able to just pick themselves up and and move forward. What is one thing that you would tell them? Like specifically, I mean, the the first step is to find your peace, to find your peace in that unfairness. You find your peace. Exactly. You find your peace and it's moving on. And that's what I always say. You as humans, you have time to sit and, and cry. You have time to sit and, and just feel helpless, feel emotional. Cause we're humans. We have emotions. That's just how right. it works. Mm-hmm. But after a day, a couple days, it's time to start thinking of what should I do next to move forward? Whether it's going to the gym and clearing your mind, whether it's going outside, getting some fresh air and clearing your mind that way. But yeah. at the end of the day, you, you have to find that, that middle ground where you're just like, okay, I can't change anything. I can't change it. Yeah, for so sure. It's time, if I can't change it and I have no control over it, it's time for me to move on. How about you? What do you think? I would say for those people that do feel sorry for themselves, and again, I've been in that situation, so I'm not pointing the finger at we all have. anybody. We exactly. All have. So, but what I would say is, yeah, you, I mean, you have to accept it. You have to accept reality. You have to accept that the things that you were wanting didn't happen. But you also have to ask yourself, do I just want to sit here and cry about it? or mourn it or whatever or do i want to move on do i want to find something where i am accepted or where i'm wanted or where i do add value because i think everybody no matter if you're a loser or a winner at some point you could add value to somebody not at every stage of life will you add value but everybody has the potential to so i think that just picking yourself up accepting the fact of what's happened and, and trying to put that one foot in front of the other there's a saying that I recently been told, how do you eat an elephant one bite at a time, Mm -hmm. right? We want to get better 1% at least every day. It's not realistic to expect a 50% growth from ourselves in in one day. And that's what a lot of people want. But I think that's where a lot of people go wrong is thinking that those quick gains and those quick changes are going to be what actually helps you grow. And they're not, they're kind of a false hope. Right. For a lot of people. I want you to relate to a situation in your life where you felt like things were just unfair. That you were in a situation and there was nothing you could do about it. You just had to accept the changes. You know, you had to accept the the moment and you had to move on. Because I feel like some of our viewers, there's some points in our episodes where we're talking about things and they feel like it's that we can't relate to them. Yeah. But we can because we've gone through these situations. So I'd like you to tell 
tell our viewers and our listeners exactly what kind of situation that was that you were in and really what you did, I mean, to move forward? Well, for me, the most recent one where I can relay it back to anything would be when I was with New York Life. I was studying for one of the serious tests that would allow me to become a financial advisor and not just a life insurance agent. And I needed a 70 to pass this dang test, right? It was the SIE test, so securities and investments test. And I needed a 70. My first time I took the test, I got a 69. I was pissed. I was mad, upset with myself. But I'm like, you know what? Next time I'll get it. You have to wait a month to to take the test again. And I studied that month, came back into the test a month later, thought I killed it. Bang. Got a 67. And I'm like, oh my God. If you miss these tests three times, you have to wait six months instead of just one month in between them. So I'm like, all right, I got one more test. After that second test, I failed. I cried. I was like Mm -hmm. really down on myself, kind of discouraged. Like, man, like I've been trying. I've been studying for weeks. I felt like I knew what I was doing. I was like, okay, well, I have one more and I'm going to kill it. Study hard for it. Pretty much at this point, I feel like I'm memorizing everything. Like thought I was good. Go on to the test. Take the test. Literally feel like I got at least like an 85. Like, I thought I did well on this test. I submit the test, and it comes back as a freaking 69. So, mind you, I needed a 70 on these tests, right? And in that moment, it's easy to feel, again, it's easy to feel sorry for yourself. I put months into this. I've paid multiple times to take these tests. I felt like I knew anything. I don't know anything else I can do to pass it. And I felt, like, hopeless at the time. What am I going to do? And from there... It was like, okay, like I got to figure something out. Like, what am I going to do when you're dealt with defeat or discouragement or anything like that? A strong mind, like you said, a strong person, I think a strong mind is going to go into problem solving. Like, okay, this is where I'm at. This is my situation. This is where I want to be. Okay. This just put a delay in what I was doing. Maybe this isn't for me. All these thoughts are going through your head. And I actually don't think it was for me. I had a fear getting into financial advising that I had a fear of managing somebody else's money and losing it. Me having to be the person that they called like, yo, where's my money at? (laughs) Yeah. Like if I wanted to do that, I would have been doing something else. So knowing that in my heart, I kind of took it like, well, maybe this isn't for me. And out of nowhere, bro, I'm not kidding you. That's when the mortgage stuff came. They reached out to me and didn't even know any of that stuff. And they're like, Hey, we have a spot for you. And that was kind of, for me, that was like, okay, maybe this is what I was meant for. And it felt right. Mm-hmm. And that's that's how we got where we are now. And what's insane is you could have sat and you, you could have felt sorry for yourself and not moved forward. And I guarantee you that mortgage opportunity that came to you, I mean, the world probably just would have made it pass. And and say it did come to you and you, and you still felt bad for yourself. You probably wouldn't have picked up your discouragement, right. your level of confidence and went into another sales position pretty much. And now you're killing it at it. You're doing a great job at it where others may would act differently in, in that situation. And, and something like that would have came to them where they could help ton of individuals and help themselves yeah. as well. And they would have, no, I, I'm just going to go back to right. eight to five. And I knew I had to take another test to get my mortgage license. Yeah. So I went through the whole process again of studying, but now it's a whole new subject. Yep. And passed that my first time. Let's go. It it feels like it was meant to be. Yep. It it triggers a fight or flight response in in these situations. And it's the disparity in, in that situation and the unfairness in that situation. There's so much more positivity that actually comes out of it. It's just all about your perspective and how you're looking at it. For sure. And so what I raise to all of our viewers and our listeners is the next time something bad happens to you, I want you to think of it as a different perspective, that it's it's a time for that the world is challenging you, challenging you to better yourself mm-hmm. mentally, physically, challenging you t- to really realize that maybe the situation that you're in it's helping you move from another situation that you shouldn't be in, Mm -hmm. you know? And so that's, that's kind of the mind process that I have whenever something bad comes my way or when they usually say bad things happen in threes, that's what I I live by. I'm like, Oh, okay. Well, if this bad thing just happened, I should probably be ready for two other things. And usually I find positive things out of it. 
yeah. and those bad things don't come. I was going to say another quote for that is it's not happening to you. It's happening for you. That's, you know, right. And you know. it's, it's, uh, it feels like it's happening to you cause you're feeling like you're going down or not achieving what you would like, but could be catapulting you into a new level that you've been wanting to get to yep. and you haven't known how, and maybe this is how you do it. Yep. I have, um, the next question I want to ask you is I had a conversation with a few people and it often comes up like where you come from can kind of determine where you go. And so the question I want to ask you is how can people not use their experience as excuses on why they can or cannot get to some place? Sure. That's a, that's a good question. That's the best way that you can not use your experience. I want to reword it, not more of an experience, but let's say like a, a situation. Okay. Because what I think is, is experiences, they actually help build people. Well, the reason why I say experiences is because it's an accumulation, right? Okay. It's like, I don't want to just say somebody's upbringing because at what point is it no longer your upbringing? I'm more so as an accumulation, say I come from poverty or I come from a, a reservation or I come from a place where there's maybe not a lot of resources or it's poverty stricken. Coming from that, how can I not use that as an excuse as to why I can't become successful? I think there's a lot of people that use where they come from as an excuse to hold themselves back. The reason why they're using that as an excuse is because the situation that they're now in, it's people are afraid of at looking as, as they're weak. Okay. You get what I'm saying? So the situation that they're in was brought by their experience. So let's say this, say from how I grew up and whatnot, sure. foster home to foster home, how my teens where I was taken from pretty much left one family to another family. So I could have used that entire experience to just give up. Right. Give up and not move forward at all. Why do you think you didn't? Because I, every single day I use that experience that I went through and I told myself, listen, when I'm older, I want to teach my kid, this is fight or flight. This is, this is the world that you live in and bad things happen to good people. Like I said before, bad things happen to good people and good things happen to bad people. That's just the world that we live in. Okay. And I can sit there and I can just be upset at the world and not make anything of a future for myself. But then guess what? In my head, I'm like, okay, well, if I don't make something of myself, that means if I do have a kid, I feel like I'm going to put them in the same exact situation that I'm in. Right. And I fought like hell not to do that. And so that's, that's what it is. It's, it's finding that anger inside. It's finding that battle sword. And you have to take that sword out and you have to go to war. Okay. Because again, not everyone's on your side. Not everyone's fighting your battles. You have to fight those battles. And once you get through those battles, I tell you what, it's nothing but green on the other side. I it's it's a lot of grass and it's a lot of sun. It's tough to just say, hey, those experiences, the experiences that you have are going to build who you are. So it's kind of like you take those experiences as, as lessons on where you never want to be again. And you use those as motivation for the future self and the family you want to build and provide a different type of lifestyle for them. Absolutely. I use it as leverage. I used to be, always be told in high school, we would, my mom and I, we'd go to our parent teacher conferences. Okay. And one of my teachers literally said to my mom, yeah, you should probably look at something else for him. Cause I don't think he's going to make it in college. I don't think he's going to get accepted in college. Am I, and she did this one-on-one -on -one with my mom. I was not there. Mm. Well, I got home and my mom told me that. And you know what, what kind of fire that, that fueled? Right. I'm like, okay, well, there's another person I have to prove wrong. Doubt and it. then all the statistics that said that the situation that I would be in and I would, I'd grow up and I'd be in the system. I'd grow up and I wouldn't be successful in life. Mm -hmm. All the statistics that said that I'm, I'm going to be held back and I'm not going to be able to make it in the world. Fuck the statistics. Right. That's how I feel. That's, mm. that's my uncut version of it. Yeah. They don't mean anything. What would you say to somebody that looked at somebody with that mindset and said that they got lucky? I tell them, listen, luck, there's nothing about it on luck. What luck is built up practice for someone to actually make it. It's built up opportunities that were just waiting to happen for them. And it's opportunities that they went and took. That's not luck. Right. There's no such thing as when it comes to luck. Opportunity isn't luck. When an opportunity comes over, it comes around to you. It's usually because you put yourself in that situation to receive that opportunity and you took advantage of it. 
Absolutely. You use yourself and what you went through to make leverage of that opportunity. It's not luck. That's how you, people don't just make it out with just luck. Right. People make it out with hard work, stressful situation, tears, blood. That's how people make it out. It's not luck. What they say? It, it takes 10 years to be an overnight success? Yeah. No, there's a lot of work that goes <laughs> into it. There's a lot. Uh, thank you for sharing that perspective for people. I think that's something that is food for thought for people out there that think that where you come from or your circumstances or the situation that you're living in, for those people that use those things as excuses as to why they can't do things, I challenge you to change your mindset. I challenge you to find out who you are inside, to think that there's people out there that have been in the same situation as you, maybe worse, and have made amazing things and amazing programs, amazing accomplishments and so much more. So I think there's a lot to that. I do. I do. And actually, instead of us moving into the part of our episode where we share five tips, tricks, and hacks, I actually want to share the upcoming news that we're actually going to be providing to our followers. Yeah, let's do it, man. We're now going to start moving into the episodes where we have entrepreneurs, business owners. We have other individuals, Mart, talented staples of their community individuals in our podcast with us and we're going to be interviewing them and you're going to learn more about them and how exactly they overstepped poverty and again that poverty it's it's mindset how they how they made something of themselves and i'm super excited about that because the next episode is going to be released in two weeks where we have our first person and that's going to be wesley benoit and it's going to just continue to build from there so i'm excited because we have a nice line up of people that have a lot of valuable experiences and a lot of valuable information to share and just a perspective that we can gain value from along with our viewers. And it's important for us to not take that lightly because there's people that are going to be coming onto the podcast, sharing intimate, personal things on how they got to where they're at and how they plan to get to where they're going. And it's important to remember that everybody is still a work in progress. Absolutely. And we all have things that we're trying to make better and and grow. So I'm super excited for these people to come on. And I just know there's a ton of value that they're going to be able to add for everybody that's listening. Yes. Well, thank you guys so much for taking the time to listen to our 10th episode. That's a milestone. Do not forget it. Fairness. There's no such thing. You aren't owed anything in this life. Again, my name's Daquan. This is Zacchaeus. We're out. We'll see you guys next time. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of Overstepping Poverty. We hope you found this week's discussion informative and thought-provoking. We know that tackling poverty is a complex issue, but by working together and understanding the root causes, we can make progress towards creating a more equitable society. If you enjoyed this episode, please share it with your friends and family, and don't forget to subscribe to our show. Until next time, let's take the next steps in Overstepping Poverty.